Though I love our 60s built home, certain areas like our guest bathroom are screaming for a revamp. I started the makeover for this room when we bought our home seven years ago. But life's unexpected turns pressed pause on my plans. Fueled by renewed determination, I'm ready to shape it into a charming powder room for my guest. It's time to infuse this room with personality and style, combining the timeless charm of modern and vintage with a bit of dark and moody. Seven years ago, I made a few changes in the guest bathroom. I switched the light fixture, removed the wallpaper and the shutters on the window, and painted the walls. And then three years ago, I removed the mirror and light fixture above the mirror and had recessed lighting installed. And three years later, not much else has changed. I have been eagerly anticipating this day for seven years. I can finally start to wrap up the entire makeover for the guest bathroom. I love our home, but let's face it, that guest bathroom is a monstrosity. The sink takes up a lot of room. It's a very small bathroom. I would say it's maybe six feet by four feet, five feet, something like that. Very small. And not only do I not like the sink, I cannot stand the tiles that are in there. The tiles never look clean. I have tried cleaning them for seven years. They always look dingy and dirty. And I also don't like how when you open the door, it hits up against the toilet, which I hope to be kind of remedying that situation in part two of this makeover. So let's design this room together. I am a Pinterest girl. I love pinning everything on Pinterest, but then I will take those pins and then I will make a mood board in Canva. I've had this one particular pin on my Pinterest board now for three or four years. It is of this beautiful black floating sink. Absolutely love it. And I thought that would be something that is perfect in this small guest bathroom. So now a few years later, her nest has reached out to me and a floating sink was one of the options I could choose from. I was over the moon and I just knew that it would be the star of this entire guest bathroom makeover. I have partnered with her nest in the past. They have beautiful modern furniture and decor on their website that just fits so beautifully into my home because I like to pair it with some of the vintage stuff that I have. And this vanity is gorgeous. I'm going for a masculine, dark and moody look for the guest bathroom. And this is just so beautiful, so durable. The top is ceramic but it mimics the look of marble, very heavy, absolutely stunning. It also has two drawers and some open shelving in the front. You know, you can play around with that, put some decor in that little area. And later in this video, I'm gonna give you an even closer look once it gets installed and we get to styling the countertop. Hernes has also been very gracious to give me a 15% coupon code that you can use at checkout. To get your 15% off at checkout, all you have to do is use TC Life for 15% off. And I want to thank Hernes for sponsoring this video. When it comes to the paint color for the room, I'm thinking of going dark. I don't actually have a color in mind. We will have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's to pick out some samples, but I am thinking dark. I love that. And also there is a lot of light in that little bathroom. There's a window. We also have some recessed lighting installed maybe last year or the year before. And I'm not even going to put a light over the mirror because so much light comes into that bathroom. And that way I can just save a little bit of money on the project. And I also want to use some of my vintage artwork. As I said, this is going to be very masculine. It's going to be moody. I wanted to have this feeling when you go in there like it's giving you a hug. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of weird for a bathroom, but I want you to feel welcomed when you come in there. And I think with small spaces like that, you can do like be very creative. If you want to go very bold, if you want to go very dark and moody, 
it's a bathroom. No one spends a lot of time in a little guest bathroom anyway, so you can really just play with it and have so much fun. So with our sink being the star of the show, it's gonna make it a little easier to design the rest of the room. I love the sink, the black and white, it's very classic, and I am gonna be adding a touch of blue and white I love a touch of blue and white in every room. I think it's just a classic look and you can never go wrong with it. And I also want to have some crown molding added since I'm not gonna be putting in um, a light above the sink. You know, what I would spend on that and the um, installation, I could just have some crown molding installed and I want to get that in there. And I want to add some of my own artwork. This is just a sketch that I found from Pinterest, but I think I do have a picture that's gonna go perfect in there. Um, picked it up at the Antiques Festival last year. I think the lady let me have it for five or $10, absolutely stunning. And I do have a mirror. I found a mirror at the thrift store, I believe for $10. Um, I think I wanna have to put a little bit of rub and buff on it just to make it a little less orangey. I think it's kind of on the orangey side. So we are gonna tackle that little DIY. And for the walls, as I mentioned, I want to go dark. I also want a modern vibe. And I'm not going to be removing all of the tile because that's gonna be a lot of work, a lot of cost. Um, I have found a DIY that we're gonna tackle in part two of this makeover that I hope goes very successfully. Uh, I've never done it before, but um, the photo that I have on my little mood board here kind of gives it away just a little bit, but I am gonna keep it a secret until part two. The paint, as I mentioned, I want to go dark we will be getting some samples and trying that out. I won't be painting until the second part, but I am thinking, as I have here in this photo, it's a blue, but it's almost a, it's a darker blue where at certain times of day, it may look a little black. So I do need some samples for that. And with the flooring, I don't know if I want to go with luxury vinyl tile or if I just want to do luxury vinyl tile that looks like wood. Luxury vinyl, very nice, very durable. It's a small space and I'm not going to have the guys rip up the tile. They're just going to build up the rest of the floor where the vanity is. That way I'll just have a flat surface and then I can just do whatever I want to do on top of that. And once I get all of my little elements together, I put them in a beautiful mood board. You can see on there, it's gonna be dark and moody. You know, the samples of different things that I'm going for. And even though it may not end up looking exactly like what I have on my mood board, this gives me a good direction because I don't need too many choices or too many decisions, um, or I'll end up with decision fatigue, and I'll also end up overbuying. Um, if you've been watching me for a little bit, you know I have an impulse buying issue because I get very excited about projects and I'll buy all the little things before I get the major things done. And I am trying to rein myself in from that. And with this, I'm not buying anything for the decor that I don't already own. Everything else I do have to buy, which are the supplies and then pay the people to do all of this. But I think this is a good representation of how I want the bathroom to look. And now that we have a really good mood board and I know the direction I want to go in, tomorrow we start demo. My sons demoed the vanity for me, and then we hired a crew to cut out the tiles for the new vanity install. They relocated electrical work, constructed a floor where the old vanity was, added insulation and sheetrock, bondoed the areas where we removed the old toilet paper and towel holder, and installed crown molding and baseboard.
The mirror had a bit of an orangey look to it, so I used some Rub and Buff to try and tone it down. I like the color, but may use a different shade of Rub and Buff in case this doesn't go with the color palette after I paint the walls. I finished priming everything last night. I wasn't going to do all the trim, but I decided to go ahead and just do all that as well because it really gave me a blank canvas. And I could see if there are any areas that still need to be sanded that maybe the guys missed when they put up the sheetrock in the mud. And then it also lets me see, are there any nail holes or things I need to spackle? And there were a few areas once I got the primer on there, but I am excited for today because they're gonna be back to install the vanity. And I also get to put up the mirror and I get to put up the artwork. We are gonna style the countertop. Now I don't wanna put a lot of stuff on the countertop. I still want it to look clean, but I want a few little things on there just to bring everything together. But they're gonna be here in about an hour to install it and I am so excited. The vanity installation took around 30 minutes and it fits perfectly in this space. The ceramic countertop is stunningly gorgeous and it mimics the look of marble. And I love that the drawers are soft clothes. And right behind each one, you see a subtle brass detail that pairs perfectly with the faucet I purchased. Going with a floating sink has made a huge difference in this small space. It looks even. <laughs> All right, let me check it. Well, it's off a little bit. One is six, one six and a quarter. That's not bad. Oh, it's perfectly level. All right. 
Whew. That wasn't easy. Just feels nice But let's get back to 